Now let's look at a resource called a stateful set. So you can use a stateful set for applications that require a stable name and state. Now the main difference between a stateful set and a replica set is that when pods are created by a replica set and they're rescheduled, they get a new name and a new IP address. On the other hand, the stateful set ensures that the pod keeps the same name and the same IP address even when it gets rescheduled. Stateful sets also allow you to run multiple pod replicas. These replicas are not the same. They can have their own set of volume claims or more specifically, own set of volume claim templates. The replicas also do not have random names. Instead, each pod gets assigned an index. I've mentioned earlier that in some of the scenarios, you want to be able to address a replica set from the stateful set directly. And the way you can do that is by creating a headless Kubernetes service. So let's see how we can run a MongoDB using a stateful set. As a first step, what we'll do is we'll create the headless service for, uh, for Mongo, uh, for the MongoDB. So let's create a new file here and we'll just call it MongoDB service.yaml. And the reason we need to create this first is because we will use this service name uh, when we're gonna create the stateful set. So let's create this service. So I'll say apply MongoDB svc.yaml. And then if we look at the service to make sure it's created, all right, so it was created. Now the next step is we will create the stateful set for the MongoDB. So let's create a new file and call it MongoDB stateful set.yaml. Just paste it in here. Uh, now looking at this YAML, you'll notice that it's very similar to the replica set. Uh, but the critical part here is the volume claim template section over here. Uh, that's the section where we define the persistent volume claim. So when the stateful set needs to create a new pod replica, it's going to use this volume claim template to also create the persistent volume and persistent volume claim resource for each pod separately. So let's create this. So I'll say kubectl apply mongodb stateful set.yaml. So as soon as this is created, if we look at the pods, uh, it's one pod is still being created, but notice the name, right? So we, we don't get that random string at the end of the name anymore. We will actually get index. So it's gonna be an index. If we would uh, scale up, we would have MongoDB 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Also, if we list the persistent volumes and persistent volume claims, uh, Oh, so let's do persistent volume first. So you'll notice that we have a persistent volume uh, created and we also have the persistent volume claims. And notice the naming. So the naming follows the same format as the naming of the pods. So it's it gets appended at an index number. So let's see what happens if we would scale the stateful set called MongoDB Let's scale it replicas. Let's scale it to, uh, let's say three replicas, right? So look at the pods. So you'll notice that they're being created in order. So the next one being created is MongoDB-1. And once this one is running, it's uh, Kubernetes is gonna go and create the Mongo uh, MongoDB2 pod. Uh, similarly, let's look at the labels for these pods. The name of the pod is also stored as a label, which you can see here. So stateful set.kubernetes.io slash uh, pod names, uh, sorry, slash pod, na pod dash name. Uh, and using this label, what you could do is you could create a service to target a specific replica. So we've created a headless service. So let's see how we could call a particular pod through that service or target a particular pod and therefore the particular piece of uh, storage and data through that headless service. So we have the three pods running, MongoDB 0, 1, 2, 3. We also have the headless service called MongoDB. So the way that you could call 
let's say Mongo2, MongoDB-2 replica is you would use the pod name, so MongoDB-2 dot service name. So this would be our URL from within our application or within wherever we wanted to call this. Uh, the fully qualified name in this case would also be dot default, which is the uh, the namespace where the services and the pods are, and then dot svc dot cluster local. So this is all. This should already be familiar to you because it's the same as um, the same format we talked about when we were discussing the services. Now the difference here is that it's not just a service name, but it's also a specific pod name that we're referring to. So let's try accessing these instances. So what I'll do is I'll run a Mongo container inside the cluster uh, and then use that container to just call and access those MongoDB 0, 1, 2, 3 uh, uh, replicas that we have running. So let's do Mongo, Mongo, Mongo 4.0.17 and let's make, the, uh, make sure that we delete it when, the, when we exit and let's do that. So this might take a minute or so for it to pull the image. There you go. Uh, so this container has the Mongo shell installed and then I can use this binary to connect to the MongoDB instance. So let's try to connect to the first one. So let's say Mongo, Mongo, and then we're gonna connect to MongoDB minus one, MongoDB minus one. And this is that first pod that we had or first replica and then MongoDB. There you go. So we're connected to to that first replica. And uh, let's just insert something here. I'm just gonna use the test collection and say insert. I'll say name first pod. There you go. So one was inserted. Um, so if we also do the find just to make sure that we find to get it back, you'll see that there's only one record here and the name is set to um, first pod. So if we exit this, I'm going to clear the screen here. And what I'm going to do now is I'll connect to the first Mongo, MongoDB-1. So the, uh, not, not the first pod, but the pod labeled with the index one. So I'll connect to that one. Previously, we connected to the one labeled with zero. So now if, if I do the same command, find command here, you'll notice that it doesn't return anything. And this is because each pod is using its own separate uh, storage. So if you would insert something here, say insert name second pod, and then db test find, there you go. So we get back the second pod. Uh, and let's exit here again, all clear. Let's just go back to the MongoDB zero again, just to show that there's each of these pods is actually using their own storage. And what we're gonna do now, I'll exit all the way out to, uh, to my computer. So what I'm gonna do, Mongo shell is being terminated because we set it to exit or to be removed when we exit. So let's delete, let's delete this first instance, right? Or zero, zero one. So let's delete it, delete pod. So what's going to happen as soon as uh, um, as soon as this pod is deleted, the similar thing will happen as with the replica sets. The stateful set will recreate it again, but in this case, it will use the exact same name, the persistent volume claim, and the persistent volume. So let's look at this pod being recreated. Uh, get pod. There we go. So this one is tw twelve seconds old, and it has the same name. Now, if we also connect back to the Mongo shell, so let's do that. So as soon as this one comes up, and then if I do Mongo, MongoDB dash one dot MongoDB, which is the service name, and then if I do DB test find, there we go, first pod, which is just proving that the, uh, the data was not really lost. 